Welcome to Solving Mazes with Reinforcement Learning, Part 11. Uh, this video, we're going to just go through my results and uh, talk about some next steps, what you could do with the project, um, how to get help if you still need it, where to find the code, all that fun stuff. So, um, let's go ahead and just run my test script. I made one change after ending the last video. I went ahead and changed alpha to 0 0.1. I feel like I got slightly better results. Um, and actually first, let me show you my TensorBoard results of the last run, just so you can get a feel for how long it should take and uh, what to expect. And we'll smooth this out uh, and refresh, because it always takes a refresh to get good data. So if we go down to reward, what we see is here, so it uh, hummed along for 3K iterations, 3,000 iterations, and it was starting to zoom in on that, you know, 350 score as an average. And uh, since it could only go for 500 time steps, uh, 350 really means that for 350 iterations, 350 time steps in a given maze, it had already found the goal. Um, so that's basically saying it usually solves the maze in the first 150 steps towards the end here. So let's go ahead and look at test.py. Um, and I did set max episode steps over here to 500 as well. So let's just run this and see how we do. And there's our uh, May solver and uh, you'll notice that it actually does still get stuck in corners uh, just like the one that we showed in uh, the, first, the beginning of this video series before I started. Uh, these are not the same parameters. This has now been trained multiple times using the same methodology and about 1 in 10 it will still wedge itself in a corner and get stuck but most of the time you can see it's pretty good at um, at solving these types of problems. So, next steps. Where do you? Where could you go from here? Um, you could go ahead and create some larger mazes. Uh, ChatGPT is actually really good at generating these. So, if we went, and I've actually got a plugin for this, I'm just going to say, "Hey, um, here's a maze. Do you understand the format?" It understands the formats. Could you give me a new maze of similar size? I found it's really, really good for this. And let's see if it generated me one that we can actually use effectively. Okay, and we'll do new large maze. And this is not something it's trained on. This is just throwing it in a completely new maze and seeing how it does. And you can see we kind of get stuck in a corner here. But it's still able to find its target uh, quite a bit of the time. So it definitely gets stuck at some of these uh, kind of switchback points, but it's still moderately successful in an environment that it hasn't seen before. Um, which is, you know, not amazing, but not awful. So, additional things you could try. You could try generating extra mazes um, and seeing just how far the current model's performance goes. Um, you could continue our experiment here where, uh, you know, before we did a small maze and then our large maze um, you could add a phase three and do an extra large maze and see just how smart you can get it to be. Um, you could try to get rid of the you know, problem where it gets stuck in corners. Um, there's a good chance that you know, some of our parameters could be tuned to be a little bit more effective. And then uh, and I'm, I'm encouraging you to do these things because you know, you're, you've hopefully learned something and had some fun coding along with the project but you're not going to really grasp the concepts, really understand it, without getting in and trying to extend it. 
Um, so I think uh, an easy first step is just to solve more mazes and try to you know solve some new challenges in this code base um, with minor tweaks. You know, play with the parameters, see what happens to your uh, to your training graph if you set a lower or higher exploration scaling factor. Um, things like that. Play with the parameters, test it, try it out, um, see see what you can get it to do outside of what we've we've built here. Uh, after that, something I highly recommend doing is taking either this entire approach and trying to train it on a completely new environment or use a completely new environment, something that's not even a maze. Um, go look up a, a gym environment um, and try to solve it using SAC. Take uh, or take an existing implementation you've got and take some of the components, particularly the uh, intrinsic curiosity module or maybe the uh, curriculum learning and try to apply those concepts to another code base. In other words, the best way to really you know, get these things, to really understand them, is to pick up, pick up the concept and go use it somewhere real uh, or real to, you know, new and where you're not just walking through the, the steps. Um, you know, these are, these are large, complex code bases. You're not going to understand all of it the first time you walk through it. Um, just take it and explore and play with it. Um, other resources available to you, I'm going to add a Discord link down in the video description. Uh, that's something I've posted for people who watch these videos to hop on and ask questions and, uh, you know, talk about the concepts. Uh, it's not terribly popular at the moment, but it's, uh, it's there if you need help or uh, want to discuss these projects in more depth. Uh, I'm also going to post the, uh, I'm going to go ahead and push this entire uh, lessons project to GitHub and, uh, you know, it'll be out there available for download. So if you've walked through all the videos and you've got a bug and you still can't get it working, uh, feel free to go out to look at my code base and uh, see if you can use that as a reference and get it working locally. Um, and then uh, finally, I'm going to say that uh, if you've enjoyed walking through this project, and, and you probably have if you've made it to video 11, um, take a moment to subscribe. I, uh, I post every two or three months, I post one of these project walkthroughs. Um, if you, you know, enjoy learning how to code out some new AI agent uh, based thing, I'll, uh, I'll be walking through hopefully a few of these a year and uh, showing you some of my projects as I go. So with that, I will say thank you for uh, tuning in and following through this project and until next time.